good morning and welcome to all who are worshipping here and online. Thank you for joining us today. We will be celebrating communion later, so those of you who are worshipping online will want to gather your juice and bread for later in the service. Uh, Alexa, our soloist, is away for the funeral of her stepfather. Pastor David is away today, so we welcome Pastor Ken uh, to our pulpit again. Please fill out the connection cards online or in the pews and let us know you are here and if there is anything we can do to support you. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in our call to worship and opening prayer, which is adapted from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For, For you, you have, have founded, founded it on, on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who are we to ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in your presence? Grant, Grant us, us clean, clean hands and, and pure, pure hearts, hearts, O Lord. Lord. Keep, Keep us from false promises and deceit. Then we will receive blessing and vindication from you, O Lord, the God of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God.
You may be seated. The Apostle John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Let us now read responsively our prayer of confession from Hebrews 4, verses 12 to 16. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let, Let us, us therefore approach, approach the, the throne, throne of grace, grace with boldness, with boldness so, so that we may receive mercy and, and find grace to help in time of need. Of need. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before, before him, him no, no creature, creature is hidden, hidden but all are naked and laid, laid bare to the, to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. Forgive us, Forgive all, us all our, our sins, sins, Father, and make us a new, a new creation. creation through the death and resurrection of our risen Lord, hear now our silent confessions. Let us rejoice in this good news. Our sins have been nailed to the cross, never to be removed. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Rejoicing in his grace and peace, let us share with one another the peace of Christ.
All right. Um, I, I'm going to quickly do announcements. Uh, are they? No, it's not in the slides. Well, just prayers for Vacation Bible School, please. It's coming up in two weeks. Um, and if you uh, can help in any way, email Lauren in the office. Um, thanks, Thanksgiving for a great mission trip. Um, Nemat's here. You can ask her a little bit about it, but I know there will be official uh, word about what happened on the, uh, the mission trip in a couple of weeks when Pastor David is back. Um, and uh, yes, keep uh, um, our soloist uh, song leader Alexa and her family in prayer. Please, uh, the sudden passing of her stepfather. And um, pray too for um, the search for a new um, youth and family ministries um, person as Lauren will be leaving in a couple of weeks after vacation Bible school. Okay. All right, that's, I think that's it on the announcements. Oh, wait, there's, oh, do you, Okay, so those of you online, you're missing out. Come next week. There's Juice on the Lawn, um, hosted by different committees. So those of you in the sanctuary, we get to enjoy it. A little humid, but the rain isn't coming till later, so we can... We can enjoy um, our juice this way or this way. Okay, out out the this door. Okay, great. Um, so um, that we at the oh, are you reading? You're reading the scripture first. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Our first lesson is from Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor according to the flesh? If Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Amen. We do not have any young people in the sanctuary but we have children of God in the sanctuary. So I'm gonna stay up here because I, you know, and quickly do our children's message. Um, so what is coming up this week? In a couple of days, July 4th, July 4th, July 4th, a big celebration. And actually um, Ken and I were able to celebrate July 4th with um, the parade in Ocean Grove yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And uh, just as an aside, yesterday, July 1st, was Canada Day, which brings to mind the celebrations that we used to enjoy in Buffalo, because July 1st through the 4th was the Freedom Festival, celebrated on both sides of the border, um, celebrating the uh, special relationships and unique histories of both our country and Canada. And one of the symbols of freedom, which I brought with me, is, you guys can probably see what this is. All right, you can hear it. So what, what do I have in miniature with me this morning? The Liberty Bell, yes, the Liberty Bell. And um, 
For those of you who know, Pastor Ken is a Philadelphian, and all things Philadelphia are great, uh, great joy. But the the Liberty Bell um, is one that we can see, and we were in Philadelphia a couple, uh, two weeks ago, I guess it was, um, and we saw the outside of the Liberty Bell um, and Independence Hall where, of course, the Declaration of Independence was written and celebrated, um, and two, we had a chance to go to the National Constitution Center um, where, and this is a tiny copy of the Constitution. All of these things are symbols of our freedoms, and I wanted to just remember and read to you the inscription that is actually on the Liberty Bell. It comes from Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 10, and in the uh, version of translation of the Bible that was popular, that was the only one at that time, proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And this verse celebrates the Jubilee, the instructions of the Israelites to return property and free slaves. The symbol of the Liberty Bell um, takes up the celebration of freedom, the celebrations that we enjoy in our country, and we're grateful for that. But we also know that we are citizens of a higher kingdom, the kingdom of Christ, and we enjoy the freedoms that we have here in our country uh, because of our love and faith in Jesus Christ. So let us pray for our nation. Um, our nations always need our prayer, but know that um, the faith that we have in Jesus goes beyond our nation and celebrates the life that we have together and the freedoms that we have together as people of God. Let us pray together. Lord, thank you that we live in a land where we have the ability to celebrate freedoms. We thank you for the men and women who've gone before writing and singing and working and praying and giving of themselves so that we might know the grace that we enjoy in you. And now bless our land, Lord. Teach us how to live one with another and celebrate the freedoms that we all enjoy in your name. We pray. Amen. Okay. Pastor Ken. And just remember, um, if you know folks who have served in the military or someone in your family, give them an extra hug and tell them thank you for your service. And remember in prayer our women and men in uniform all around the world, there for us. All right, our second scripture from Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance or perseverance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Let us pray together. Dear God, um, on this weekend where we celebrate our freedom politically, let us recognize that the greatest freedom is to be in relationship with you. It is in your name that we pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. 75 years ago, 
then President Harry Truman took the courage and step of faith to recognize the modern state of Israel. 1948 was three years after the end of World War II and the end of the Holocaust. And the president was told, don't do it. There will be warfare. But he said, this is the correct and right thing to do. See, Harry Truman was from Missouri. And he grew up Baptist. He heard all the stories in Sunday school and sermons about the Jewish people. And he said, we must do justice to the Jewish people. Now, several weeks ago, right here in our sanctuary, we had an interfaith service. Many of you know, but those of you who are new, for many years, we hosted in our dining room Temple Shalom, which is now out that way in Scotch Plains. And we've always had a very close relationship with our sisters and brothers at Temple Shalom. And that several weeks ago, we had Rabbi Joel lead us in worship in Hebrew and in English. And our own Dr. Nancy Di Tommaso spoke about the history of Juneteenth and the importance of Juneteenth. But what is also important, and I called this sermon, we are all children of Abraham. Now, to give us a little background again and remind us of things, because we always need reminders. Abraham was a patriarch of a tribe, and they marched around the Middle East. And if you know folks who've been in Israel, but actually further over, you have Jordan, you have Iraq. It's a lot of desert. And you have still to this day tribal peoples all throughout the Middle East and in North Africa. And God spoke to Abraham. And he made a promise to Abraham. He said, your descendants will be as numerous as the sands on the sea or the stars in the sky. Now, as the story moves on, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, could not have children. So they go through this business. Abraham says, well, I'll take your slave girl, Ishmael, so I can have a descendant. And it didn't work out. Hagar and Ishmael and all that. Interesting. Ishmael, who actually was the first son of Abraham. This week, our Muslim friends celebrated what's called Eid al ha and one of my pastor friends and I were having breakfast at Le Peep, which is the nice breakfast place in Edison. And that's a big place for Muslim people to come. So we were saying, Salam Aleikum. So we met folks from Iraq and Palestine and Egypt. Now, back to Abraham. In, in Genesis, three men on donkeys come or camels, not donkeys, camels. And they said to Abraham, next year at this time, you and Sarah will have a son. Well, how can I have a son? How can Sarah have a child? And the three men said, as you trusted God before, trust God now. And so we have Isaac. And I want to remind us all that it is because of our Jewish neighbors that we have the promise of Jesus Christ. Now back again to our scripture in Romans. Back in those days, the Hebrew people were the only peoples who had the concept of sin and repentance. And they were the only people who learned trust and faith. Now, Back to this passage in Romans, so follow with me. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation to make it even clearer. Abraham was the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God, right relationship with God? The scriptures tell us Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous or justified because of his faith. Now, if you're into doing Word documents and all that silly stuff, 
you know there's a phrase that's called justify. And you take the middle, whatever it is, icon, so that the document is at right angles, not to the left, not to the right, but perfectly square. That's called to justify. And it's the same concept. We are made right with God by our faith in the Jewish man who became God, Jesus Christ. Now, righteous, which is another word for justify, doesn't mean moral perfection. It means being in right relationship with God so that then we can grow in our faith. First comes the faith. First comes the relationship. And then comes the behavior. We don't earn God's love. God gives us his love by being in right relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Now, just to give you a little more background, in our Presbyterian Book of Confessions, there's a document called the Heidelberg Catechism, which was written in the 1600s in Germany. And there's a, a question, how are you justified before God? This is a long answer because kids in those days, unlike our people now, used to be able to memorize stuff. And they said this, even though my conscience accuses me of having grievously sinned against all of God's commandments, of never having kept any of them perfectly, still being inclined toward evil, nevertheless, underscore that, nevertheless, whatever that word in German is that's translated, nevertheless, without any merit of my own, out of sheer grace, God credits to me the perfect righteousness of his son, as if I never sinned, as if I had been perfectly obedient. All I have to do is accept this as a gift with a believing heart. So a way of remembering that, think of the word justify, right relationship, just as if I never sinned. Because God sees his son. He doesn't see our imperfections, which for me are many. And if you and I are honest with ourselves, yes. And there be, may be some of us <clears throat> who may be ashamed of what we've done or not done in the past. But I want to give you good news. Why is it that every Sunday <clears throat> in the Reformed tradition we have a prayer of confession? Why is it that Liz told us good news? It's good news. Our sins have been nailed to the cross, never to be taken off the cross. Now let me go on to the next thing. Let's, let's turn around. Let's do a transition now. Take a deep breath. The second thing we read about in Romans. Paul says we can boast in our sufferings or our problems because suffering produces endurance or perseverance or it develops strength of character and character produces hope, the hope of salvation. Now we all in this room know that trials and struggles, we can complain. I do a lot of complaining. Ask Linda She's, you know, she has had to live with me for 46 years. Sorry, dear. But anyways, and I'm not the easiest person to live with. But I know myself. We all know that when we've come through those trials and sufferings, with God's grace, we have developed strength of character. We have developed hope. And it says, hope does not disappoint us because the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Now, because we are in right relationship with God through Jesus, we can stand arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder with those who have and are suffering. We see so much hatred around us. Now, some of you may be aware that several weeks ago, in 
the Fanwood Nature Center on the bridge and in LaGrand Park and Forest Road parks, there was hate speech graffiti scratched in, spray painted in against black people. You know what the words against black people are. Against Jewish people, you know what those words are. And against LGBTQ people, you know what those words are. Now, the Fanwood Town Council was very vehement in condemning this, and our Scotch Plains Fanwood Interfaith Ministerium, of which Pastor David and I are part of, we came out with statements. What we want to say, because we are in right relationship with God, is that we want to stand against hate. And if you haven't noticed in our nation, there's a lot of hate. If you haven't noticed that various uh, judicial decisions and um, congressional decisions and presidential decisions, wherever we are on the political spectrum, or if you're saying, I don't even care, we are called to stand against hate. We are called to be ministers of reconciliation. Even in our own congregation, there are folks, and many of us here, who have very strong viewpoints, and maybe no viewpoints at all, which is fine. But we are called because we're in right relationship with God, because we are justified by faith, to stand with those who are hated. Doesn't mean we have to agree with everybody. Doesn't mean we have to agree with all opinions. But we are called again, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, and as we say as Presbyterians in our confessions, we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. That we can be people of dialogue. That's what we're called to do and be. That we stand with those who are persecuted. And this is especially when we look at, again, against crimes of hate in, um, against Jewish people. You may not be aware of it, but hate crimes against especially Jewish people have increased. Where my daughter lives, down in um, Howell, which is by Lakewood, Swastikas always show up. Manchester, I don't know where Manchester, New Jersey is, it's somewhere. Somebody spray painted swastikas in that Jewish community. I have, we have many Jewish friends and they walk around wondering who's the next, where's the next house that's going to get a swastika? Where is the next place where eggs are going to be thrown? And again at black people too. If a, African-American family is the first in a neighborhood. There still is hatred. Let me give you one more thought and then we'll go on. Uh, on Wednesday nights on ABC, some of you may remember years ago a TV show called The Wonder Years. Well, they've updated it to take place in Montgomery, Alabama with a African-American family. It's a comedy, but it's a comedy with social thought. So this past Wednesday, they had about a black family who were told, why don't you move into a white neighborhood? You can be the first. And they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But at the end of the show, the, the main family, whose name I can't remember, decide they're going to stay in their neighborhood because they don't want to have their children being yelled at. They don't want their children to have eggs thrown at them. They got to meet a Jewish family and the Jewish family told them we were the first Jews in this neighborhood and you don't want to know what we've had to endure. And friends, the Wonder Years takes place in 1968 or 69 and things have not changed that much. There is still hatred. There is still bigotry. And unfortunately, it's getting more and more out there. One more thing, and then I'll let you go before we go communion. I've titled the sermon, We're All Children of Abraham. The Lord's Supper comes from Passover. You've heard me say this. You've heard past Pastor David say it. It's because of Passover, it's because of our Jewish friends that we can celebrate the goodness of God in Jesus Christ. 
So as we come to communion today, let it be a time that we can celebrate our legacy from our Jewish brothers and sisters, and that we go forth from this place again as ministers of reconciliation, because we've been justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Thanks, Lord, for so much. I know this message, there's been a lot in it. Let's continue to chew on what you've done. Let's digest it. Let us be grateful and humble people. In your name we pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our next hymn is a hymn that actually comes from our Jewish friends. It's called The God of Abram Praise. And by the way, I forgot, we're now going to the part of our service of giving back to the Lord from our financial blessings. And uh, those of you online, you can give uh, through Zell. Okay. of silence. Again, as we've said, there's a lot of hurt in our land, a lot of rage in our land. And again, wherever we are politically or whatever, we're called to be ministers of reconciliation. We take our points of view, but we dialogue. We listen to other people. And we, as God's people, want to see peace in our land. So we want to take this opportunity again this weekend as we celebrate um, independence, as we celebrate uh, to first of all, again, remember to keep in prayer our women and men in uniform. I think we still have two or three folks from our congregation serving. Uh, Nancy, your son is in Germany. 
and a couple other people around. Uh, you may know some folks in the military. Pray for them. Pray for our leaders. Uh, it, wouldn't it be nice if our leaders actually sat down and listened to one another instead of screaming hatred at each other? Whatever the political party, whatever the perspective. And that when we watch the news, I know the second sermon, when we watch the news, we're critical. Remember that news is presented with a point of view. And no commentator on TV or radio or print media or internet has all the picture, and no one is totally objective. So think about that. All right. So we're going to just take a moment of silent prayer. If you have a person you want to speak, and then we will close with the Lord's Prayer. So let's be in silence. Dear Lord, may we be a humble and grateful people. And we remember the prayer which your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are a holy God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he opened the blind. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners and proclaim the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. Rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand in ascension, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory and will come again to make all things new. And so the night before he died, Jesus took the bread, the Passover bread, and he said, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melaka Olam. Blessed are you, Lord God, as you give us bread. And then he took the cup, the last cup of wine, the cup for Elijah, the fourth cup of wine. And again he said, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melaka Olam. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the fruit of the vine. And so you are welcome, and those of you online, um, as you've taken bread, we'll eat together bread, and then we will do the cup.
I'll serve you. You sit down. Yeah, right. Heaven will get it right. <clears throat> the body of Christ says. Body of Christ. Hmm? Yes, right. I'll serve me. Oh wait, you guys have gotten served. Yes, you got served. Hold on. Christ, the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you have fed us with the body and blood of Christ. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing and share your joy and hope with all. 
In your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. that door and let's go forth as people of hope, people of gratitude. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>